Our analysis begins with a recent publication in the peer-reviewed journal Astronomy and Astrophysics. The authors are Rashi Jain and Yogeshwara Dekar, researchers at the Tata Institute of Fundamental Research. Their subject, identified by the James Webb Space Telescope, is a galaxy named Alaknanda, and it presents a fundamental contradiction. The core problem is one of uh, age versus structure. The accepted theoretical framework held a foundational premise. That well-formed, structurally mature galaxies. What astronomers call grand design spirals. Require a minimum of several billion years to organize themselves. Gravity needs time to work. And Alec Nanda did not get that time. When we observe this galaxy, we are seeing it as it was only 1.5 billion years after the Big Bang. That's just one-tenth of the universe's current age. So if you think of the universe as a hundred-year-old person, Alagnanda showed up in the first 10 years. But it has the structural maturity of a 50-year-old. That is the anomaly we need to unpack. To understand just how severe this contradiction is, we have to revisit the prevailing model. The model for the early universe. Early galaxies were expected to be irregular, clumpy, disordered. Right. They were stellar accidents. Messes of gas and new stars, not these elegant, ordered structures. And if you want to build a magnificent, symmetrical, spiral galaxy like our own Milky Way, you need a few things to happen very slowly. First, you need a steady, gentle accretion of cold gas. Second, that gas needs billions of years to settle into a stable, thin, rotating disk. And third, you have to avoid major disruptions. Violent collisions, for instance. Anything that would scramble the disk and reset the structure to a chaotic mess. The key mechanism for creating those iconic sweeping arms. That's something called spiral density waves. Let's just pause on that term. A spiral density wave. It sounds complex. But the concept is actually quite straightforward. Think of it like traffic on a highway. The cars, or in this case, stars and gas, are all moving. But where there's a slight slowdown, the cars bunch up. That bunching is the density wave. The stars themselves aren't permanently stuck in the arm, they move in and out of it. But the pattern itself, the arm, it persists. It rotates very slowly. And to create a stable, persistent pattern like that, mm. well, it takes an immense amount of time and a very settled, orderly disk. This is where Alec Nanda completely upends the theory. The JWST images show that Alec Nanda is, structurally, a textbook grand design spiral. It has two clear, sweeping, symmetric arms. They wrap cleanly around a bright, rounded central bulge. It looks almost exactly like the Milky Way or Andromeda, but it formed when the universe was still really in its infancy. The resemblance is so striking, actually, that the researchers named it Alagnanda. After the Himalayan River, which is one of the twin headstreams of the Ganga. Ganga being the Hindi name for the Milky Way. So it's a very deliberate nod to this, this mirror image they found at the earliest possible epoch. Okay, so let's move from the structure to the scale, because the sheer speed of assembly is just as jarring as its form. How large is this infant giant? Alagnanda spans approximately 30,000 light years across. Now, that's smaller than the modern Milky Way, but it's substantial for that age. But what really defines it is its extreme star formation rate, its, its industrial output. And here are the numbers. Alaknanda is annually churning out new stellar material equivalent to roughly 60 times the mass of our sun. 60. Now, to put that in perspective, our present-day Milky Way, it's a gentle giant. It produces maybe three or four solar masses per year. So Alaknanda is operating at a pace at least 20 times greater than our home galaxy today. And this furious production rate, it leads directly to the core timing crisis. The technical analysis by Jane and Wadadekar indicates that about half of Alec Nanda's total stellar mass half of it was formed within a period of only 200 million years. 200 million years. It sounds like a long time to us, but let's contextualize that. The dinosaurs lived on Earth for 165 million years. The entire complexity of Alec Nanda, a stable, organized star factory of a galaxy, came together faster than the entire reign of the dinosaurs. Cosmologically speaking, that is essentially instantaneous assembly. It's a profound challenge to our understanding of um, physical efficiency. We believe there were fundamental speed limits on how quickly gravity could pull together and organize that much matter while maintaining stability. The structural maturity, as lead author Roshi Jain points out, should belong to systems billions of years older. The implication is clear. The theoretical framework for gas accretion, for disk settling efficiency, it needs a mandatory revision. It seems the universe was far more efficient at building complexity than our models ever allowed for. 
This naturally brings up a critical question for any rigorous analyst. Well, yeah, how certain are we of these measurements? Seeing a galaxy this far away, this early, with this much detail, is only possible because of a very specific cosmic mechanism. That mechanism is gravitational lensing. Alecnanda lies directly behind a massive galaxy cluster known as Abel 2744, Pandora's Cluster. The combined gravity of that cluster is so immense that it actually bends the fabric of space-time. And that bent space-time acts like a giant natural magnifying glass. It distorts and amplifies the light coming from Alecnanda. In this case, the lensing effect made the galaxy appear about twice as bright for the JWST instruments. Which is what allowed the team to resolve the fine structural details, the arms, the central bulge, that would otherwise be impossible to detect. And the integrity of the data is robust. Jane and Wadadecker didn't just look at one image. They analyzed the JWST data using as many as 21 different photometric filters. Think of those as different color and wavelength checks. A massive data set sourced from the JWST Uncover and Mega Science surveys. And this allowed them to precisely estimate not just the distance, but the internal dynamics, the dust content, and its star formation history. This meticulous technical validation is why the core conflict is so compelling. Co-author Yogesh Wadadekar summarizes it perfectly. The galaxy managed to pull together 10 billion solar masses of stars. 10 billion. And organize them into a coherent spiral disk in just a few hundred million years. This is concrete proof. The early universe was vastly more organized, more structurally dynamic than any previous model had the capacity to predict. And this is precisely why we do these deep dives. And why this level of analysis is necessary for you. This kind of technical data, the speed, the mass, the 21 filters, it's often filtered out by broader coverage for simpler narratives. Our focus here is exclusively on these data anomalies, on the rigorous technical details that directly challenge established scientific consensus. It's the only way to provide you with a genuine understanding of the frontier of knowledge. So now the focus shifts from confirmation to explanation. The scientific community has confirmed the structure exists, but now they have to resolve how it formed so quickly. The debate centers on two primary competing scenarios for the origin of those spiral arms. Scenario one is the steady methodical approach. It proposes that even in the chaotic early universe, enough cold gas streamed into the disk at a high stable rate. A rate sufficient to allow those orderly density waves we discussed to naturally carve out the pattern. This implies extreme efficiency. Scenario two is more violent and less permanent. It posits that the spiral structure isn't stable, but rather a short-lived, tidally induced spiral. Caused by a rapid gravitational encounter with a smaller companion galaxy. Effectively stretching the larger galaxy into that shape, but only temporarily. Like throwing clay on a potter's wheel. Right. If it's a tidally induced spiral, the structure is transient. It fades. If it's from orderly density waves, the structure is stable and long-lasting. Resolving this difference is the next great task and the researchers already have a plan. Future observations will be crucial. They plan to use JWST's own spectroscopic instruments. Which can analyze light signatures to measure velocity. And the Atacama Large Millimeter Array, or ALMA, telescope in Chile. ALMA is excellent for observing the movement of molecular gas. The objective is highly technical, but the goal is easy to understand. They need to measure the galaxy's rotation to determine if the disk is dynamically cold or dynamically hot. A dynamically cold disk is orderly, settled, like a smoothly spinning record. All the components rotate together in a thin, predictable plane. A dynamically hot disk is the opposite. It's highly turbulent. More like gas and stars boiling over, moving chaotically, vertically, as well as rotating. So if Alec Nanda is dynamically cold, it strongly supports the theory of orderly, long-term growth, and stable density waves. And if it's hot, the structure might be short-lived, favoring the tidal interaction idea. But that still demands a rethinking of how so much mass could assemble so quickly. Ultimately, this discovery transcends the technical details. Alec Nanda isn't just data. It's a forced revision of the cosmic timeline itself, the bedrock narrative of how all complex structures form. And here's the existential conclusion for you to consider. If galaxies could achieve this level of structural maturity this rapidly, it means the necessary conditions for forming complex environments. Stable systems mm. with enough heavy elements and organized rotation to allow for planets, for worlds like Earth. May have arisen far, far earlier in the universe's history than we ever calculated. Alignanda stands as compelling, undeniable technical evidence that are comprehensive models of cosmic evolution.
Models built on decades of observation and rigorous theory are fundamentally incomplete. It reveals that the stability of scientific knowledge is an ongoing, fragile process. It's subject to immediate mandatory revision based on new data that contradicts everything we thought we knew. The universe just proved it was a faster, more efficient builder than we ever gave it credit for. The question now is, what else happened in those first few billion years that we have fundamentally underestimated?